Welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we visited the beautiful town of Cove. We took a look at the clock tower gate in Yule. St Declan's Round Tower in Ardmore and we wild camped at Ballyquin Beach, County Wexford. We are Carol and Ken and we like camping in our little red camper. Absolutely amazing park up this one, right by a beach, right by some toilets and look at that, they actually provide two litter bins. One of two vans here last night really peaceful here well sheltered from the wind oh yeah we're having these prop first aren't we how many are we having one, uh, one each just one each i think they're large aren't they i would split them in half right down right down the middle and then they'll just fry up easier take less time interesting these lay buyers aren't they because they're you can't pass no. so you'll have to go to the end now to make to leave space for the next person to come in behind hello you three you are very very inquisitive cows aren't you having a good day then beach in it. pretty windy here so I'm going to use this opportunity to have a little practice with the drone. I'm going to take it over to these small cliffs now just to see what it's like if there's any air turbulence there. I wonder if this little tunnel through to the next beach is man-made or natural. Looks man-made to me. It's a pretty little beach here, quite sheltered from the worst of the waves and nice and sandy. And I didn't notice any parking restrictions. So provided you don't cause any problems to that house, you should be okay to stay the night here. Well, this was a successful flight I'm gaining more confidence with this drone now in how it performs in strong winds. Oh, that one 
Anne's easy to pronounce. Do you think you got that one right? I think I got Anne's down about right. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, we made it. And the spin. Yeah, there's bins everywhere. What county is this? This is Waterford, Waterford I, think. I think. Yeah. Waterford, this is how you do it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Interesting cloud formations here. We've not moved very far along the coast, but this is a very different beach. Many more stones and a lot more rocks in the water. So, at first I thought Well, at first I thought this was a bridge, but that certainly looks like a fireplace. Is that a chimney? No, it's all blocked in. It's all blocked in. So it can't be a fireplace then. If you look up there, you know, that looks like a roadway, doesn't it? In the centre. Yeah. And that would be two footpaths either side, I don't know. We've reached Waterford now, and hopefully we're going to take a tour around the Waterford Crystal Factory. We get in there, there. Two point one. There's plenty of spaces. It's two euros an hour. We haven't actually booked a tour of the factory and we don't know how long it takes. So Carol rang them up and they said that we would need about two hours to have a good look round. This is Reginald Tower and it contains the Viking Museum. This is an amazing replica of a Viking longship. Can you just imagine crossing the North Sea in this? Reginald was the founder of Viking Waterford, and I think he looks a very impressive chap. The factory is only a short walk from the car park, but the town does seem very quiet today. Yeah. Right, here we are. Let's see what this is like. <laughs> that was a lovely welcome. So my name is Amanda, I'm here to guide. A little bit of changes because of social distancing, as you may imagine. <laughs> we have a little footprint, so you can see the final footprint and stand on it. Also because of the rules change, we can't actually touch any crystal at the moment. Now, if you forget that, don't worry, we do have hand sanitizer throughout the entire factory. So we were established in 1783 by the Penroses. Now that was George and William. They were merchants, they knew nothing about crystal making. So they went to England, they hired John Hill, who was a master craftsman. Together they had great success. They had gentry and royalty as a clientele, and were shipping across the globe. By 1799, they had made their fortune. They sold it to a local family called the Gatchels, who had incredibly bad luck. King George IV decided to tax and luxury items, made the price go up. They were also trying to run the business during the Great Irish Famine. And as you can imagine, not many people buying crystal at that time. They closed up in 1851. And it took us almost 100 years for the factory to reopen. It was in 1947, and by Charles Patrick, and here's a Czechoslovakian, who had great success in his own country, had to leave after World War II. At that stage, communism had taken over and closing down the factories he had. So he had a friend in Dublin called Bernard Fitzpatrick. He convinced him to choose Waterford. Talking about the history of crystal making. And in a letter, he said we have very tropical weather, palm trees, and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs>
Beware gents, I lost a few moths from my wallet here, so I need to get some more. There is a strong link with the Vikings here in Waterford, and there were thousand year old Viking walls which once surrounded it. In the square is this carving. We can certainly recommend a visit to the Waterford Crystal Factory. It was a really interesting tour. This full-size maze is made from 1,500 yew trees. These are the remains of Dunbrody Castle. It's not really a castle, more of a fortified house. So what have you cooked up now then? Tonight we have some pork chops, barbecue sauce, yep. baby potatoes, sweet corn and green beans. Very nice, thank you very much. Dunbrody Abbey was founded in 1170, following the Norman invasion of Ireland. Due to its position near a major maritime route, the abbey was placed under the patronage of the Blessed Virgin Mary, with the name Port of St Mary's because of the safety the abbey offered to people in trouble. Dunbrody, while small, was very successful. That was until Henry VIII fell out with the Church of Rome and ordered the dissolution of the monasteries. Unfortunately, Dunbrody was one of the first abbeys to fall foul of the new legislation and it was finally dissolved in 1536. The abbey was soon stripped of its lead ransacked and fell into disrepair. Please let us know what you thought of the video in the comments and if you got any questions, just put them there and we'll do our level best to answer you. If you are interested in the MV200 van, then check out my review video, which there'll be a link to at the end of this video.